Good evening. I hope everybody is doing well tonight. Uh, this evening, we will conclude our series on the heart of the matter. I hope that it's been a blessing to you and a help. I hope that you have benefited from the teaching of God's Word and you're able to apply it to your life. And tonight, I just want to remind you one more time that many times that the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. Therefore, let's heed the words of Proverbs chapter 4 and keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Here this evening, we are going to be focusing on a biblical heart and how to get God's Word, not just in your heart, but taking that measure of God's Word that you have memorized and meditate on and you've learned and applying it regularly and consistently to your life. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 6, it says, And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart. It was always the desire of God that His words would dwell in the heart of His people. Not just the head, but in their heart. Because out of the heart are the issues of life. Therefore, a heart saturated thoroughly in the Word of God is naturally going to live a supernatural, glorious life according to God's Word. Uh, but oftentimes, we use God's Word as a cliche. We use it on our lips when it's convenient to us. And sometimes we even twist God's Word in order to get away with whatever we want to do. But if we would honestly... Place God's Word in our heart, it would absolutely change our life. And that's what I want to talk to you about this evening. I want you to notice, first off, as we begin, the value of a biblical heart. Now, for many people, this may be um, elementary. Maybe you even uh, learned this many years ago. But I think we all need to be reminded that there is an intense value to putting God's Word in our heart at more valuable than many of our relationships, our jobs, the things that we often prioritize above the Lord is the value that we have here in God's Word. So let's rehearse just a few things of value concerning a biblical heart. First off, a biblical heart prevents involvement in sin. I hope that everybody agrees that we want to abstain from evil. Uh, we want to live godly lives. Well, the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart... Why? That I might not sin against thee. And the Bible teaches us that the value of a biblical heart is that it helps us to leave, lead lives that are not vexed by sin. Another valuable aspect of a biblical heart is that it keeps us from shame. Psalm 119 verse number 80 says, Let thy heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. Now, everybody knows what it's like to hang out with somebody who is an embarrassment to be with in public. I hope that my life in public and in private is not an embarrassment to God. I hope that my life is upright and, and righteous as can be. And the only way that we're going to achieve this is to have a biblical heart. Let my heart be sound or correct in thy statutes, following thy laws and thy guidelines given in thy word. Why? That I be not ashamed. There's another value to a biblical heart. It prevents involvement in sin. It keeps us from shame. But it also guides our decisions. Psalm 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If we want to be able to make godly decisions, we need to put God's word in our heart that it might illuminate our path and our decisions. It is foolish to think that we can live godly lives while making ungodly decisions. It is foolish to think that we can have a biblical life while making unbiblically advised decisions. And I will say this, just because your decisions and your lifestyle meet up with what is considered Christian culture does not mean that your life and your decisions line up and meet biblical principles. 
Christian culture and biblical principles are not always the same. Now, do we wish that they were? Do we wish that the culture, the Christian or even the church culture of today mirrored and, and mimicked in true sincerity the principles of God's words? Yeah, we wish that was true. But there is error in every institution of man. And the culture that we have in this country is increasingly godless, even in our own churches. So the only way that we make sure that we're making biblical, godly decisions is to have the Word of God hidden in our heart. The next um, valuable aspect of a biblical heart is it clarifies truth and exposes error. You know, Jesus says while He's praying in John 17 to sanctify them through Thy truth, and He makes this statement, Thy Word is truth. You cannot know truth outside of the Word of God. The Bible says that the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. It also says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And if we're going to have a reverential fear of God, it should be manifest in how we approach and treat His, His Word. Look, His Word is truth, and we are extremely arrogant to live lives that are dictated otherwise. The fact is that man will often try to convince you that his philosophies and his ideas and his priorities are true, and sometimes we even convince ourselves. But in order to truly follow truth and to shun error, we need to have a biblically saturated heart. You know, another one, it's not on this slide, but let me add this. You know, the Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? Which by taking heed thereunto according to thy word. How do we cleanse our ways? How do we uh, live lives that are godly and upright? It's by having God's word in our heart. Now, I want you to notice this, that just knowing the value does not mean that we have a biblical heart. These principles of God's Word and these verses of God's Word need to be in our hearts. It's not enough to just know it or know about it. It must be in our hearts if we're going to experience the true value of biblical teaching. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 4, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So those are all things of value. But notice what the most valuable part of this is. It's how it's applied. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Here is how that works. As we put God's Word in our heart, it gives us godly discernment about the world around us and even the emotions that we experience and the decisions that we make. Sometimes we can convince ourselves that we're doing the right thing, but when we apply the Word of God to each decision, we don't have to convince ourselves. We let the Word of God convince us or convict us. And I might say that sometimes we'll make decisions based on the culture around us and convince ourselves that we've done the right thing. But yet if we were to apply the Word of God, we would be convicted in discovering that it was completely opposed to what the Lord would have us to do. You see, when we hide God's Word in our heart, it becomes a discerner of our thoughts and of the intentions or the intents of our heart. And if you want godly discernment about your thoughts and your heart, then you've got to have a biblical heart. Now, here's the thing about it. Um, much of the time um, this evening, we have focused on what needs to be in our heart. But the truth is, we also need to focus on how to get those things out from our heart. You know, the Bible says that you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So out of the heart, these things flow out. Our words flow out. Our emotions uh, flow out. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
So if you've put in Bible in your heart, maybe as a child, maybe it's something you're actively doing now, which I encourage, then the question is, how do you get the, the biblical truth that is in your heart, how do we make sure that that ends up coming out and applied to our life? So you see, your heart is much like a well of water. And the things that are in there, inevitably, they're going to work themselves out. And as you put Bible in your heart, you want to make sure that it's the Bible understanding of God that works itself out above anything else. So if I could pose the question this way, how do we draw that water from the well? You see, the truth of a well is that it's got water in it, but it's deep down there. So how do we make sure that that water that's deep in that well comes out and it's that biblical truth that is flowing and nourishing our life instead of the things that that are in our flesh or, or in our mind. Well, we're going to look to Deuteronomy chapter 6 for this. So Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 6 through 9. Um, if you've got your Bibles, won't you join with me there? And here is what the Bible says. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So once again, God's intention is that His words dwell in our heart. So here is how that works. And thou shalt teach them diligently, verse number 7, unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates." So the question is, what do we need to do in order to make sure that that biblical heart is drawing out with each decision, with each conversation, that we're, we're drawing from that instead of drawing from our flesh? And I would say that primarily the one word that I could, could emphasize the most is familiarity and, and also frequency. That we're familiar with God word, God's Word and we're frequently dwelling on it, speaking of it, and meditating on it. So if we're going to draw from that scriptural well in our heart, then Scripture must first off be memorized. So verse number 6 says, And these words which I commit, command thee this day shall be in thine heart. The way to get Scripture in your heart is to memorize it. Notice that in this verse, it doesn't say looked up, studied, or researched. It's talking about words that are, that are in our heart, that have been placed there by previous study, by ple previous memorization, and by previous research. It's already there. You see, here's our problem. We think that Scripture memory is just for children. The Bible doesn't say that. In fact, as you get older and your decisions have a greater impact, not just on you, but on those around you, I would, I would contend that Scripture memory is more important for an adult, more vital even for an adult than for a child, because the decisions that we make have a much larger impact in our lives and the lives of those that rely on us than even for a child. Now, we ought to teach them as a child, but... We ought to not forsake that and say, oh, that's just kid stuff. No, this is, these are the matters of spiritual maturity. So if we're going to draw from that well, first off, Scripture must be memorized. There must be something in there to draw from. Second off, Scripture must be taught. Look at verse number 7. Verse number 7 says, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Teach them diligently unto that, thy children. Now, this has two impacts. You know, the first one, which is what everybody sees immediately, is that you should teach your children the Word of God so that they have the same biblical heart that you're aspiring to have, so that they have that well to draw from. But I will say this. It's not just about teaching them. It's about dwelling in Scripture to such a degree that you're able to teach it. I like saying this to, to people that I'm, I'm training and, and working with, and you ought to write this down and, and consider this. You cannot teach what you do not know. You cannot teach what you do not know. And when God commands us to teach, what He's also saying is that you need to know my Word well enough to teach it. 
if I were to come through that, that screen and start asking you about your beliefs, would you know enough Scripture to teach me why you have those biblical positions? You see, if we're going to draw from that well, we need to get in habits of teaching others. You say, well, I don't have anyone to teach. Well, get yourself plugged in uh, to your family and start by teaching your children. You say, well, I don't really have a family. Well, get yourself plugged in to your local church and, and teach a Sunday school class. Uh, you want to cause the pastor to pass out, uh, go into his office and say, I don't care who, I don't care who, I just want to teach. And see what he says. And I believe the Lord will open doors of opportunity you see, there's value to teaching, not just to the student, but also to the teacher. I know more about subjects that I focus on teaching than subjects that I just study to learn for myself. So Scripture, if we're going to draw from that well regularly and have a truly biblical heart, we have to have habits of memorizing, habits of teaching, but also habits of speaking. The Word of God should not just be something silently considered, but it should be something, something that is commonly spoken. Um, look with me at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 7. The Bible says, "...and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children." And notice how many words are given to this subject of speaking God's Word. "...and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way." And when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Notice all of the times where God specifically says that you should be speaking about God's Word. It doesn't mean that you're having to quote God's Word necessarily, although I think that would be good. But talking about God's Word. Now, it is not just saying that you're talking about God but rather that you're talking about His words. Now, in order to speak about His words, once again, you must know His words, and you must know His words well enough to have that discussion. So it all goes back to both memorizing, having that knowledge firsthand and readily available, and then being able to navigate through that through conversation. Uh, conversation. The Bible says, um, as you teach your children, it says, talk to them when thou, thou sittest in thine house. When was the last time that you got together with your children or with your spouse or with your parents and decided you're going to have a discussion about a verse in the Bible. Pick one. Any verse. Uh, let the Bible fall open and allow yourself to start talking about it. And here's the thing. You don't have to have all the answers. But through that conversation, perhaps the Holy Spirit will guide you to those answers about what that verse uh, speaks of and pertains about. And you'll be enriched by it and realize that not only is it something you're putting in your heart, but something that you're learning to draw from in conversation. It says when you're sitting in your house. It also says when you're walking. By the way, it goes on, when thou liest down, when thou risest up. In other words, what it's trying to say is you ought to be talking about Scripture all the time. And you ought to be so comfortable that it's a natural conversation. A natural conversation that you're able to have. It's not forced, but it just flows out of your heart. Now, in order to practice this and rehearse this, you may feel that the spoken Word of God, as you seek to insert it into your conversations, you might feel a little cumbersome, and you might feel like it's a little forced at first. But as you rehearse it and as you dwell on it, as you practice talking about God's Word, it will become more and more natural. And that well and that, that ladle that you scoop out of that water will become more and more frequent. That's what the Word of God is teaching about the biblical heart. Scripture must be memorized, it must be taught, it must be spoken, and it must be seen. It must be seen. At verse number 8 says, "...and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes." It's speaking to the people of Israel, the Word of God speaking to the people of Israel, and God is saying, "...hey, you should bind my Word upon your hand and put it as frontlets between your eyes." The Jewish people developed these things in fulfillment of Deuteronomy 6 8 called phylacteries. Maybe you've seen pictures of them. There's a picture of one depicted here on your screen. You'll see the Word of God bound upon his, 
his hand. Also, you see the box located on his forehead. Inside that box are the first few books of the Bible. It's in fulfillment, literal fulfillment, of what God commands them to do in this, in this verse. But you see, this verse has a purpose. The purpose is this. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy head. It's not just for other people's it's not for other people's view of you. It's so that you're reminded. Now, I want to say this. This was given to the Jewish people for a very specific thing. But yet, although the strict adherence to, to binding them on your hand and placing them between your forehead, I'm not advocating that you go get tattoos of Scripture and put it on your body. Uh, what I'm saying in principle is that you should have the Scripture in front of your eyes. The Bible says in this verse... Thou shalt bind them for this purpose, for a sign. And I think that you ought to have a visual representation of the Word of God in front of you on a daily basis. For me, I know that I'm a pastor, and maybe you think that this is just a pastoral thing that I do, but I have my Bible that I carry with me to and from the office. Now, I could leave one Bible at home and one Bible at the office, but quite frankly, what I like to do is is to carry it as a reminder, as a reminder of, of how I am to live. We ought to put it before our eyes. I, I love having scripture on the walls of our home. It's a reminder to me in, in front of my eyes. And maybe you need to write scripture with a dry erase marker on the mirror that you get ready in front of every single morning as a reminder of God's word and fulfillment of his desire for us to have it before our eyes. Because if we want to constantly draw from this well, it needs to be constantly in front of our eyes. Now there's one more thing that I see in this verse that I want to draw your attention to. In verse number 9, it says, And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. In other words, God's word should be valued. It's not just enough to memorize it for the sake of memorizing, but realize that his word has an intense value that we can draw on each and every day and each and every moment of the day. You see, it has incredible value. Do you have a biblical heart? Maybe you've studied and memorized scripture years and years ago, but it's been a long time since you've drawn from that well. How about we stay focused once again on Memorizing scripture again, teaching it, speaking it, seeing it, valuing it, placing it into our heart, not for the purpose of just pushing it down, but for the purpose of drawing it up. Here in Proverbs chapter 4, that we are to keep our heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. I hope you've enjoyed this series and I hope that it's been a help to you. And I hope that we aspire in every moment of every day to have a biblical heart. God bless you and thank you for being with us here this evening.